Watch fans, it's Anders here on Watch On Channel. Today, a comparison between two of my favorite watches from my own personal collection. On this side here, we have the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39, a watch which is discontinued. It was only produced from 2018 to 2020. I did a full review of this one, also a history of the lineup of Oyster Perpetuals from Rolex and also a six month look back on six months of ownership. You can find the links to all these videos down in the description. On the other side here we have the Piaget Polo S. This is a watch which was introduced in 2016 and recently actually the white dialed version was discontinued by Piaget. It comes in green and blue and a grayish black and you can get a white version as well but then it's in rose gold case this is a steel watch the reason why i'm doing this video is because i want to show you the differences between what we can say is a luxury watch and which is a high horology luxury watch so these are two different tiers of watches there's no doubt about the fact that rolex is a huge brand I saw some figures, they are almost 25% of the total revenue of the Swiss watch industry. Piaget is a historical brand, but it's considered high horology. This is kind of the first level and then at the second level probably you will find Rolex. I know this is definitely something that is going to provoke a lot of people, but it is the truth if you look into the tiers of Swiss watchmaking. First of all, this is a kind of hybrid between a sports watch and a steel watch this is the reference 114300 it's powered by the in-house rolex movement the 3132 and it's precise to plus one second per day this particular example it has 48 hours of power shift and 100 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown it's built in 904 stainless steel which is the proprietary stainless steel by rolex it is 39 millimeters in diameter, 47.4 millimeters from lock tip to lock tip, 11.2 millimeters in thickness, and it has a 20 millimeter lock width. I will show you the loom comparison between these two watches just in a little while. It had a retail price of 5,700 US dollars. I bought this watch as a partly trade between a Railmaster Omega Railmaster and some cash, so I approximately paid combined. 8,500 US dollars. Now this is up 13%, so it's getting close to actually breaking the $10,000 barrier. So this is a watch which is definitely gaining a lot of value. This is a much more recent purchase to my collection, the Piaget Polo S. It is a kind of remake, a modern remake of a Polo watch that Piaget did in 1979 introduced in 2016 as i said this is discontinued but you can find other colors it is a high horology watch and we're going to show you the details of why this is high horology just in a few seconds compared to the rolex it's powered by the in-house automatic high beat movement the 1110p this is approximately minus two seconds per day which is definitely nice it has a 48 hour power reserve just like the rolex it is 42 0.3 millimeters in diameter, but only 46.7 from lock tip to lock tip. And you can see you get female indlings because the bracelet falls very nicely down. You only get 9.4 millimeters in thickness, which makes this watch wear really, really nicely on the wrist. And then you get a really annoying 21 millimeter lock width, but you wouldn't ever want to put any other strap or bracelet on this watch because it's absolutely high quality. This has Swiss Superluminova. The Rolex has its own chroma light. I'm going to look into the loom just a little bit later in this video. This has a retail price or had a retail price at around 9,300 US dollars. I paid approximately 8,700 US dollars. So it definitely does not retain its value. This will definitely go down in price. And if you look into the newer watches you are actually looking into 11,900 US dollars retail for one of these PSA Polo S but you will maybe only pay approximately maybe 8,500 to 9,000 US dollars pre-owned so this is definitely not retaining value or gaining in value as the Rolex which, which is an interesting point so a very Apparent thing is definitely the dials. So you can see with both watches, we get really nice white dials. The 
Rolex style is a little more cream colored. And with both watches, we get loom filled hour markings, which are really nicely made. And then we get a logo at 12 o'clock with the Rolex, just below 12 o'clock with the Piaget. And then we get superlative chronometer, officially certified Swiss made with the Rolex here. With the Piaget, it's just automatic and then Swiss made above the date complication at six o'clock. This has a date complication. The Rolex doesn't have a date complication. I think that the Rolex has a really nice look. It's very simple. It's really nicely made. When we look at the PSJ, we get a much more angular look. Definitely also because of the shape of the case, which kind of resembles a 70s TV screen. We get this kind of almost teeth shaped hour markings and then the railroad track out at the outer perimeter of the dial. And then you get this kind of oddly shaped date window at six o'clock, which I really like. And this is also why I opted for the white version because on all the version, it's actually a white background on the date window. I think it, it doesn't blend in very, very well if it's not a white dial, but that's just a matter of taste. You can see the hands are much more refined than the Rolex hands. You get many more angles as you can probably sense here, much more angular, much more loom filled into these hands. Let me just try to pull out the crown so we can actually see both hands. And you also see that they actually did a little more with the second hand because of the P, which is the counterbalance of the second hand. The polishing of the hands, the polishing of the hour markings and the texture of the dial is just to a higher level than the Rolex. And just be aware that the, that the Rolex is actually a very, very nice, high quality, almost immaculately made luxury watch so definitely not saying that the rolex isn't a good watch or that how they made the dial and applied everything to the dial isn't good it's definitely so here is the loom shot as i promised you guys and i think it's a tie i think both watches they actually give you really really nice loom for not actually being typical sports watches or dive watches they are kind of more dressy style sports watches both of these watches are kind of hybrids between dress and sport and I think you get really great loom with both watches. So having a look at the finishing on the Rolex you can see we get a very high polish on the bezel, we get a high polish on the sides, then you get brushing on the locks and a totally brushed bracelet, brushed clasp. You don't get a see-through case back, you get a signed crown which is a screw down crown which is really nice and then you get this kind of boxed raised sapphire crystal which looks really nice. A thing that I like is that it's very easy to read this watch even though they actually don't apply anti-reflective coating to the crystal. Having a look at the PSA, you get a really really masterful brushing on the sides then you get this nice chamfering on the underside. Really nice polishing. Polishing on the top again. Polishing on the locks and polishing on the outer parts of the bracelet and it's a smudge magnet, magnet as you can see. Brushing on the inner parts and then you get a butterfly clasp. I'm not a huge fan of butterfly clasps but this clasp is done really really nicely. A really cool thing is that you get half links so you can easily find the right adjustment. With the Rolex you have to remove full links but I did manage to get the perfect adjustment and inside of the clasp you also are able to actually make a little more fine-tuned adjustment here. So Rolex clasps, clasps are some of the best in the business and it this definitely doesn't disappoint. I think the Rolex clasp is better. You also get a really nice polishing on the bezel and then something that I think is superior to Rolex if you compare it with the Piaget. The Piaget brushing on the bezel here. Absolutely amazing. This is so well made. I hope you can you can sense how beautifully detailed this brushing is and how it reacts in light. It's absolutely amazing. And then when you look at the case back, you see the in-house beautiful movement. Again, if you want more details about this Piaget watch, you can find the full review by clicking the link down in the description. This is an in-house high quality manufacturer movement, not to the same level as Patek Philippe or the Piquet. 
On my 18 cm circumference wrist, you can see how nicely the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39 wears on my wrist. It's a perfect everyday, very versatile watch with some nice polishing and some nice brushing and everything just looks good. And here the Piaget Polo is, is on my wrist, again 18 cm circumference. You can see it wears bigger because the dial is just much bigger. It's 42. Point three millimeters in diameter, but with a smaller or shorter lock to lock distance than the Rolex and approximately two millimeters thinner, which is really a nice feature of these modern day luxury stainless steel sports watches from high horology brands. It wears really nicely. This is a watch that is meant to be noticed. It's a watch that is very legible, very easy to read. You definitely get the biggest differences in the finishing. I think that the Piaget is just finished to a higher degree than the Rolex. And this says a lot because the Rolex is a really nicely finished watch. You just get a little more attention to detail, a little less industrialization of watchmaking with the Piaget. And I think the Piaget in many aspects is just a more fun and original watch. It's definitely the watch you won't see too many other people wearing. And also because you get a higher degree of finishing to the hands and also a see-through case back to the beautiful movement, of course the Piaget will win. But just remember the Piaget is also a much more expensive watch. I can definitely see why people would choose the Rolex and I did choose it myself. I own and love both of these watches, they are not leaving my collection. But if I want to wear something that feels really really special, I'm definitely wearing the Piaget. But all in all, I love these watches. And I hope you did enjoy this comparison between some of the best watches you can find on the market if you want a kind of versatile sports slash dress style watch which isn't too much of a dive watch and isn't a boring grandfather dress watch. If you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook and share this video. I will see you very soon again. Thank you. Bye.